Hi, I'm Jamie Delgadillo from the University of Sheffield in the United Kingdom. Like many other psychotherapists, I have sometimes found myself feeling stressed and exhausted, since this can be a challenging line of work. In this vlog, I will discuss the topic of therapist burnout. First, I will explain the concept of burnout. Next, I will consider its prevalence in mental health care professionals and its relation to treatment outcomes. And finally, I will discuss some ideas about risk factors for burnout. An influential perspective on occupational burnout was proposed by Christina Maslach in the 1980s, who defined it as a psychological syndrome characterized by three domains, emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and a reduced sense of personal accomplishment. Some years later, research by Eva Demaruti and colleagues involving surveys of healthcare professionals and factor analysis gave way to another contemporary perspective which defines burnout as a, as a state that is made up of two domains, emotional exhaustion and disengagement. So let's break this down and consider these two domains. Emotional exhaustion is characterized by feeling drained, worn out, overwhelmed by pressure, and finding it difficult to relax and attend to other areas of activity after work. Disengagement, on the other hand, is characterized by feeling disinterested and bored at work, feeling negative or despondent, finding oneself speaking about work in increasingly negative ways, or feeling disconnected to the job and doing it almost mechanically. According to published surveys, between 21% and 67% of mental health workers experience high levels of burnout. According to this literature, there are several risk factors, which can generally be grouped into three classes. Individual factors include features such as personality and self-efficacy. Caseload factors include client-specific stressors, such as repeated exposure to the accounts of trauma survivors, or difficult relationships with clients, which may be related to phenomena such as transference and counter-transference reactions. Furthermore, organizational factors include difficult relationships with peers at work or supervisors, and the balance between job demands the support available to meet those demands, and the extent to which the worker has a sense of autonomy. Burnout adversely impacts the person's general health, their attitudes towards their clients, and also their job satisfaction. Clearly, burnout has a high personal cost to health workers and, and economic costs to health services, but it also has a negative impact on the health of patients. For example, our research lab conducted a large-scale study involving over 2,000 patients treated by 49 psychological therapists in England. In this study, we found that therapists who had higher levels of burnout atta attained poorer treatment outcomes compared to therapists who had lower levels of burnout. But this effect was highly specific. High levels of therapist disengagement were adversely associated with patients' depression and anxiety symptoms, but no such associations were found for therapist exhaustion levels. Now, this makes sense if we think about the concept of disengagement, which is similar to Maslach's classic concept of depersonalization and involves doing a job in a mechanical and disinterested way. It is clear to see how such an approach and attitude might undermine the therapeutic alliance and therefore the general effects of treatment. Putting this all together, it is clear that there are a number of risk factors that increase the likelihood of experiencing occupational burnout. I hope that this vlog has been informative, useful for your clinical practice, but also useful for your self-care as a therapist. Until next time.